Hey guys, Tony here from Tony Tech Bytes, and this is a complete guide on how to build a PC in 2020. So I'm going to go over every single step with building a PC, going over the installation, picking the parts, as well as downloading drivers and Windows 10. So I'm going to hope that you have at least some basic knowledge of computer parts such as the GPU, RAM, and graphics card. I might include some information based on the parts when I install them, but I won't go too in-depth on each part. So if you don't know what each part is already, I would suggest watching some YouTube videos explaining every part individually. So I already made a 45 part series on TikTok on how to build a PC. Of course on TikTok there's only a one minute limit so there's really not much you can do with that and uh, it's inconvenient to just go through every single video. So this video is going to be an extensive 4K video on how to build a PC. First off let's go straight into the parts that I chose for this build. Okay, let's go over all the parts in this build. This is a customer build, by the way, for my new startup, Specify. If you want to check it out, I'll link it in the description down below, as well as all the parts over here. They're going to be affiliate links, so I do earn a tiny bit of commission from them. But it just helps out my channel get new gear to produce better videos. Okay, so for the CPU, central processing unit, we got the Ryzen 7 3700X. 8 cores, 16 threads, 4.4 gigahertz boost speed. It also includes a cooler, but the customer chose a Kraken X53 240mm all-in-one liquid cooler. This is a pretty good cooler. I use it in my personal build and I really like the performance as well as the aesthetics though. My build is kind of closed off so you can't even see it anyways. For the SSD, to put Windows 10 on, we got a 500GB uh, NVMe SSD from Crucial. We also have Windows 10 Home. This is an OEM version for the uh, operating system. Of course, we have to go with the OEM version because uh, I'm going to be building this for someone and I don't want to get sued by Microsoft. For RAM, we have 2 times 8 gigabytes. 16 gigabytes in total, 3600 megahertz uh, in the white color. This is from Corsair. The Vengeance RGB Pro. For thermal paste, I'm going to use Arctic MX4. They actually sent me some to review and uh, use in my own builds. It should theoretically be a little bit higher quality than the stock thermal paste with NZXT coolers to hopefully give the customer a little bit more headroom when they're gaming so it doesn't get as hot as with the stock paste. Okay, we also got some 91% isopropyl alcohol. This was from... I don't remember, CVS Pharmacy or something, but it's out of stock everywhere. Good luck trying to find any. Uh, I got that like a year ago. Okay, uh, I have some paper towels. You can go for like microfiber cloths, but I'm fine with paper towels. I know they leave lint, but I really just don't care. Uh, and it has, it has not caused any problems for me in the past. Okay, for the power supply. 80 plus bronze, 650 watt power supply from Corsair. Also has a five year warranty. It's assembly modular, so uh, some of the cables are already attached. But that's fine because it's just the motherboard 24 pin and a couple of essential cables. And also 80 plus bronze rating, you want to have something that's reliable, especially from Corsair as well. I love Corsair's power supplies. And uh, for the motherboard, we have the Asus RG Strix B550F. It's, it also has Wi-Fi built in so the customer can connect to Wi-Fi if they don't want to use Ethernet. I suggest using Ethernet, but I don't know. It's up to them. For additional storage, we have a 2TB uh, 7200 RPM hard drive from Seagate. This is the Seagate Barracuda. Standard one that almost everyone goes for. And then for the graphics card, we have a 2070 Super from MSI. And this is the Ventus lineup. It's not the absolute best performing card, but it definitely shouldn't be bad. And it was one of the only ones in stock. So, and oh, I forgot the case. It's not here yet. It's the N60H710i. I'll show it later in this video and also like putting it together inside the case. Um, but I don't have it yet, so obviously I can't showcase it in this video. As a side note, I like to test everything before putting it inside the case, just out on the box. Uh, because I want to make sure that everything works. I want to download drivers and download Windows 10 before I put it inside the case It's just my thing you can download drivers and Windows uh, after putting it inside the case I just like having all the software and just making sure everything works before you put it inside the case And because if you put it inside the case and you troubleshoot something something doesn't work It's just gonna be really difficult Because uh, you have to take everything out and figure out what doesn't work or what was what does work This will just take more time, but it's a more of a sure way to find out what's wrong with your build uh, before just putting it all together. So obviously the next part of this build is to unbox everything and then test it outside the case before we put it inside. And of course, how did I forget the tools? I'm just gonna use two of these uh, magnetic tipped screwdrivers that I just picked up from Amazon. You don't necessarily have to get magnetic tipped screwdrivers. A Phillips head screwdriver should work with almost every mid to full size tower case. Uh, of course, with the go if you go for like a mini ITX build, you might need a special screwdriver, but Phillips head should be more than fine. Uh, and I prefer having a magnetic tip because if you drop screws inside the case, it's really hard to fish out, so this is really easy. Uh, so let's go into it. Oh, and I forgot, I keep forgetting things. You don't really need anti-static protection uh, unless you live in like a really dry and staticky environment. I don't have carpet flooring, so it's not much of an issue for me, but if you are concerned about static electricity, you can get an anti-static wrist strap and connect it to something that's grounded. 
I'm not gonna do that because I really don't care. And also most modern components come with ESD protection anyways. It's not really a big issue that much anymore. Okay, so let's go into unboxing everything and putting it all together outside the case first and then we'll go on from there. Unbox the motherboard, take it out of the box by removing the sticker here. I don't have any sharp tools with me. Actually I do, but uh, whatever, screwdriver work. Okay, take it out of the box. So it's inside this anti-static bag and you just wanna take it out of the bag carefully. There are also gonna be some other accessories. We're gonna put the motherboard to the side first. Just gently lay it down on the table. So the accessories that we need. Uh, Wi-Fi antenna, that is pretty important if you're gonna be using Wi-Fi. Take it out of the box. Okay, let's lift up this motherboard tray and take a look at the rest of the contents. Zip ties, uh, SATA cables. Actually, we do need we do need uh, the SATA cables for the hard drive. And you got some uh, you got the manual, which of course is important. And uh, we need these screws. These are going to be useful for the M.2 SSD installation. If you don't have an M.2 SSD, then of course that won't be useful. And yeah, uh, okay. I might actually I don't I don't need the manual. Okay. Just uh, So now that you have the motherboard and the essential cables outside the box, I like to close up or put everything back inside the motherboard box. Then uh, open up the anti-static bag. Okay, it should be down here. Just carefully take it out. Try not to touch anything on the back. It should be kind of spiky too. Uh, so there's the anti-static bag. You want to just rest the motherboard on a box. Don't put it on top of the anti-static bag because this can actually, the outside can actually conduct electricity. If you're paranoid, I mean, if you don't care, then whatever. Okay, so close up the motherboard box and gently put the motherboard on top of the box. Try to hold it by the heat sinks as well as the sides of the motherboard. Don't try to touch any of the contacts. Let's flip it around this way. Uh, you also have a lot of stickers. You might, you also might have a couple stickers on the motherboard, so keep that in mind. Um, let's open up the CPU box. Uh, okay, take out the CPU. All right, the CPU is right here in this container. Uh, we have also we also have the Wraith Prism included, but I'm not going to be using that in this build uh, because I'm going to be using the NZXT AIO. So let's get the CPU out of this container, and here is the plastic tray. Guess we can just put this back inside the box. All right, the CPU, the Ryzen 7 3700X. This is essentially the brain of the computer. Uh, so what you want to do to install it is to open up this socket arm. Carefully take out the CPU from the plastic tray that it comes in. And what you want to do is grip it by the sides. Do not touch the pins on the bottom. And this really isn't that hard. All you have to do is just drop it in with no force required. Uh, so, okay, let's grip it by the sides. And you can see the pins on the bottom. Try not to touch them. Uh, and you also want to line up the triangle so you can see. So you can see a triangle over here in this corner. Line it up with the triangle on the upper left of the motherboard socket. You can see the triangle on the upper left of the socket, and the CPU also has it uh, on the bottom left. You can see the triangle more clearly on the back side of the CPU. But you basically just have to line up the triangles with the CPU triangle to the socket triangle. All right, let's go back to it. The socket arm is up. All you have to do is hold the CPU by the sides. Try not to touch the bottom, like I said before, and just gently drop it in. It doesn't require any force. You can wiggle it a little bit if you want to, and just close the socket arm, and that's it. It's already installed. Here is a closer look of the CPU. As you can see, it was really easy to install. Uh, the Ryzen logo should be on its side, but this is pretty much how it should be installed. There's nothing more to it. And by the way, if you want to install the Wraith Prism Cooler that comes with the 3700X, you should leave these uh, clips installed. But because we're going to use a different cooler, we're going to have to remove them. Alright, since we are using the NZXT cooler, we have to remove this, this clip at the top as well as the bottom. So all you have to do is just unscrew it with a Phillips head screwdriver. You want to keep these uh, inside your CPU box or just keep it somewhere uh, just because you might need to return the motherboard in the future or you might consider selling it. You might upgrade your motherboard as well, so you want to just keep these clips handy. There's a back plate at the back of the motherboard, uh, which comes off if the clips are unscrewed, so you can see it's right here. 
So uh, for the N60 cooler, we just have to leave this backplate on because we're gonna use it later. All right, let's get to installing the SSD. We have to remove it from the container, remove the SSD. So here is the crucial SSD that we have to install into an M.2 slot. I'm just gonna use the top slot. I'm gonna install the M.2 SSD to the top slot. Uh, okay, let's unscrew this heat spreader. As you can see on the back of the heat spreader, there is a thermal pad and there's a sticker covering the thermal pad. So you wanna remove this before installing your M.2 SSD. Okay, here is where the screws that we took from the motherboard box come in handy. You need to install a standoff on the 2280 spot for just most regular M.2 SSDs. So just get your fingers and screw in the standoff. It should look like a nut, like a larger, can't really describe it. It's a standoff. Okay, it should look something like this. Let me focus. Should look something like this. I have a standoff installed with my fingers. Take out the SSD from the plastic tray that it comes in. Of course it's sliding around because I opened it incorrectly. Okay, most people like to rip off the sticker but this usually voids the warranty. I know warranty uh, stickers are not allowed in the US or so I think but uh, most stickers actually do come with heat spreaders or like tiny uh, pieces of metal just under them. So it, trans it helps the SSD transfer the heat onto the sticker. So we're just gonna leave it on. I don't wanna avoid any warranties, especially if the customer doesn't wanna avoid them either. So to install an M.2 SSD, find the M.2 slot on the motherboard and try to line it up at a 30 degree angle and insert it. Make sure all the gold contacts are fully in. Then lower the SSD and uh, get the screw as well as a screwdriver ready and just screw it down to the standoff that you installed earlier. You might have to hold down the SSD while you're screwing it down. Uh, but just basically just screw it down until it's down all the way. You don't have to over tighten it. You don't have to, there isn't really like a specific torque. Just turn it down until you can't really turn anymore. Try not to strip the screw either because it is pretty small. Uh, so there we go. We have the M.2 SSD installed. Okay, I think I flipped the heat spreader around the wrong way. So just line it up again and screw it down. Okay, I think this fits a lot better now. Screw in this end. And there we go. You don't have to over tighten it, just make sure that it's tight. And there we go, the SSD is installed. While we're here, let's install the RAM. So let's open up this package. Okay, take out the RAM from the box. This is another pretty easy part of building a PC. So let's just, first we need to find the slots that we have to use. Uh, most motherboards use slots 2 and 4 if you have 2 sticks for dual channel memory. If you have 4 sticks, just use all 4 sticks, or I mean all 4 slots. Um, if you have a weird motherboard, you might want to check the manual that comes inside the box for which slots to use to optimize your memory. You want to use dual channel memory because it's just faster. Okay, so, or I believe dual channel memory offers more bandwidth. Whatever you want to call it, I don't want to confuse beginners, just don't roast me in the comments. Okay, so... Uh, you want to unclip the second and fourth RAM slots or whatever slots you're using for the motherboard. You might have clips at the top and bottom of each slot, but for this motherboard, it's only at the top, so with the second and fourth ones unclipped. As you can see for these DDR4 RAM modules, there is a notch on the bottom of them, so you want to, you want to make sure to line this up with the notches on the RAM slots. Let's zoom in a little bit more, and you can see that the notches from the slot and the actual RAM sticks have to line up. So uh, let's make sure this is lined up. And just, you can use two hands and lower it down, you should hear a click. Okay, so we got the first one in. Let's get the second stick. Just line it up, make sure the notches line up. And install it. Okay, there. It shouldn't feel like anything's breaking, you should hear clicks. If it's not fitting, then you might have to flip the RAM sticks around because the notches have to line up. Just make sure that you have it all correct. You can also see the notches are back in place so the RAM is correctly installed. Okay, now let's get the power supply open. This is what powers the entire system. Draws in power from the wall and converts it into DC power for your components. Okay, important information, we don't need this garbage. The AC cable, we're gonna need this. Some zip ties, we're not the verge, we don't need these. Okay, and here is the power supply. Let's take it out of the box. Take out all the styrofoam and packaging. 
I suggest you leave this inside the box and keep the boxes as well in case anything doesn't work. Uh, you can always leave this here. Uh, and if you ever need to return anything, you have everything. So yeah, here we go. Should also probably save these zip ties for later uh, for cable management. And I don't need this anymore, so we're going to throw this away. Get the AC cable untied as well because we're obviously going to have to plug this into the wall for the power supply. Save these zip ties. Okay, let's open up the other bag of cables that come with the power supply. So, the power supply is semi-modular, so it already has a 24-pin uh, for the motherboard power as well as CPU power. So, uh, all we need is graphics power as well as SATA, but uh, SATA, we don't need the SATA cable now because we're not going to plug in the hard drive just yet. So, where is the graphics card power? This should be it. So the graphics card power should look something like this. It should say PCIe or something along the lines of like GPU, VGA, PCIe, something like this. So this is what you have to plug into the power supply and then plug into the graphics card for power. Uh, PCIe as well as CPU. So let's just plug it into any slot. Make sure to line up the notches as well. You should hear a click. There we go. It's like a slight click. So if it's fully inserted and if it was fairly easy to install, then you probably did it right. Okay, we want to power the motherboard, so let's plug in this 24-pin cable into the 24-pin header on the motherboard. Uh, make sure to line up the clips as well. So this cable is always super annoying. Uh, actually, this one went in really smoothly, surprisingly. Okay, this CPU power cable, uh, it also has notches at the top, so we'll have to check out the top of the motherboard. It should be on the top left. Uh, all we have to do is plug in the 8-pin header uh, the, act the additional 4-pin header isn't... Oh, I flipped it the wrong way. I'm so dumb. Okay, the additional 4-pin header isn't absolutely necessary unless you plan on overclocking the hell out of the CPU, but I don't. So, all you need for uh, Ryzen 3000 is this 8-pin power, eight pin, uh, power connector. Okay, so we plug that in. Now let's get the graphics card ready just to get a display signal and uh, plug this in later. Okay, let's open up the box, take out the graphics card from the anti sight bag. It should have a piece of tape on the back side. Uh, just take out the graphics card and put it on the table. Make sure you want to save the anti sight bag in case you ever have to return anything or if you ever want to sell the graphics card, you have something in the box to protect it. Okay, let's put the box away and then uh, get to our testing. Okay, yet again, we are testing out everything out of the box, out of the case first, to make sure it all works, and of course, this CPU does not include graphics, so we need something to make sure that the graphics works, uh, so the PCIe clip, just make sure to unlatch that, and then uh, line up the PCIe slot uh, for the graphics card to the motherboard. Just line it up, and you should hear a click. There we go, and it is successfully installed. Just have to plug, plug in the power connector. Make sure to remove any covers like these plastic, rubber, whatever covers for the graphics card PCIe connector. If there are any, because you don't want to have these uh, in while you try to plug them in, they're just not going to fit. So you can see an 8-pin header as well as a 6-pin one. want to plug in the 8-pin uh, one first. Well, actually, it doesn't really matter which uh, order you do it in, but just make sure to line up the clips again. And just install it, should fit in and sort of click in. And for the six pin, just, uh, there we go, just plug it in. And here we go, we got this excess like two pin cable. We don't need this. By the way, NZXT includes an awesome manual inside the box. If you ever get confused by anything I'm doing, just check the manual. It'll definitely explain in a better way than I possibly can. Let's take out the cooler from the box and I already have experience with the Kraken X53 since I use it in my personal system. This is going to be a piece of cake. I got the fans and uh, the bracket mounting stuff, cables, and the cooler with the radiator. Alright, the N60 Kraken cooler has an Intel bracket already pre installed. Let's just leave this plastic container uh, cover on the cold plate because uh, we just don't want to mess up the thermal paste. We're actually going to use the stock thermal paste on the CPU just to test it out, make sure it all works. Then I'm going to wipe it off. Of course, I'm going to show you in the video. Then I'm going to apply some Arctic MX4. So hopefully, this can show you how to install thermal paste or apply thermal paste as well. And uh, so, yeah, let's get the AM4 bracket because uh, we are using AMD system AM4 bracket. So we have to use these AM4 standoffs as well as this AM4 
uh, brackets for the cooler. And you also need some uh, screws and the, like, these nuts. I don't know, what, what would you even, what do you call these things? Like, um, thumb nuts? Yeah, I think they're thumb nuts, these nuts. Okay, just to install the cooler onto the CPU, as well as the fans onto the radiator, we're just gonna need eight of these washers, eight of these super long screws, four of these nuts, as well as the AM4 standoffs, and the AM4 uh, bracket. Okay, so let's uh, open up this AM4 standoff kit. Oh, don't do that. Don't open bags like how I did. Okay, so let's get the motherboard closer to us. Okay, like I said er earlier in the video, you're gonna have to leave the included back plate on. So all you have to do is get your thumbs, screw in these standoffs. You can do them in the opposite corners, like the upper right, bottom left, and then upper left, bottom right. It doesn't really matter since these are just standoffs. Uh, so yeah, we just have to install these onto the back plate. It just it should just screw in really easily like this. Okay, you're gonna have to remove this plastic cover. Remove the Intel bracket. Who the hell even uses Intel these days? Why don't they just put the AM4 bracket? Like, okay, just put it in. Just you just have to like rotate it the opposite way uh, to. Instead of removing it, obviously you're gonna have to install it. And uh, I'm gonna leave the plastic on. Just I guess I can let the customer remove it. And uh, kind of gonna kind of like let this plastic hang here and install the fans. Actually, you know what I should have done? I should have just installed the fans first and then uh, taken out this plastic because the thermal paste might get on the table. Whatever, let's just install the fans. Okay, we just have to test out this uh, configuration outside the case first. So I'm gonna have the fans in the push configuration, pushing air uh, through the radiator over there and you just have to screw them onto the radiator like so. Try it, just line them up with the radiator, line up the fans and uh, just uh, put a washer in between these long screws like this and then line them up and screw them in. You should do opposite corners first and then screw in all eight screws. Now just screw in these screws. It's that simple. Opposite corners if you want to. I mean, it's not really necessary. These are just fans. Uh, and also don't over tighten them because you could potentially damage the radiator and potentially cause a leak. You don't want to do that. Uh, so yeah, let's just install these screws. It's pretty simple. Just screwing down fans. Okay, so now we have to line up the cooler onto the motherboard. And of course, it's not fitting here because the tubing is not long enough. Just make sure to line up and thermal paste is already pre-applied. Pre We're just using this to uh, make sure that it turns on. We can use the stock paste. Get these nuts or these like thumb nuts and line them up with the standoffs that we applied, uh, that we installed earlier onto the motherboard and just screw down the four corners. You wanna screw the opposite corners uh, and keep the cooler onto the CPU to cool it, obviously. You need proper mounting pressure to cool it. So screw down these like thumb nuts, I guess, whatever you wanna call them, onto the opposite corners. And yeah, you should be able to uh, screw them down successfully with just your fingers. You don't really need a screwdriver and of course I dropped one in there so we're gonna have to pick it up and I'm blocking the camera. Okay, yeah. So just screw them down like this. And we are not overclocking, we're not doing anything crazy. We just need this to not overheat while we are checking BIOS and everything to make sure this thing turns on and we're gonna have to connect all the cables too. All right, so let's plug in this cable. It comes inside the box with the Kraken X53. Uh, make sure you line it up correctly as well. Just at this awkward angle, I can't really see it. Uh, this powers the pump um, as well. And uh, we need this USB cable to obviously change the colors and everything. So plug in this end. Make sure all the cables line up and they're fully inserted. Then this end of the USB cable goes into a USB 2.0 header on the motherboard. Should look something like this with a, uh, should look something like this. Also make sure the pins line up with the 
sort of block. Let me focus. There's like a missing pin here, so just make sure it lines up. Otherwise, it won't fit in the uh, header. Okay, we just have to flip it around, plug it in. Okay, it's gonna look really messy right now. Obviously, we're just testing out the outside the box to make sure this thing works. And this cable plugs into the pump header. Should be somewhere here. Oh, okay, AIO pump. It should say AIO pump on the motherboard. Uh, let me just zoom in a little bit later once I plug this in. You know, it would be a lot easier if I had two cameras or if I had the money for two cameras. Uh, so yeah, we have to just use what we have. Okay. And I forgot we also have SATA power, so I'm gonna have to plug in the SATA cable to the power supply. Okay, I grabbed this from the power supply box. This is a SATA cable. You can see that it looks kind of flat like this. Just untie it and plug it into the power supply. Make sure that you plug it into the correct uh, spot in the power supply. Over here you can see peripheral and SATA. You just plug in this end and also line up the notches as well. It should plug in fairly easy. And let's get the SATA part from the pump cable and uh, line it up. There's also a notch on this cable so you want to make sure to line it up properly. And I'm out of out of focus and out of the shot. Okay, where is it? Like this. Should plug in fairly easily and uh, we're just trying to make sure this thing turns on first, so yeah, okay. Here's where the pump header pump uh, plugs into, so you can see that there's like a notch on the bottom. If it's a three pin one, then just plug it into uh, the three pin part and make sure the uh, notch lines up, so just plug it in. It should fit in fairly easily. If you have trouble finding it, then, I mean, if you have trouble plugging it in, then you might want to uh, make sure you line up the notches. Okay, now we know, now we want to plug in the fans from the radiator. Uh, just make sure to find a chassis fan header. It should say chaff fan or cis fan, something along the lines of that. And yet again, you just have to line up the notches with the fan cables. Just make sure to line it up with the fan headers on the motherboard. If you don't know where the fan headers are, make sure to check your motherboard manual. It should be different for every motherboard. And it should fit in fairly easily like that. And uh, I think we just have to plug in the AC cable, turn this thing on, as well as uh, HDMI or DisplayPort or whatever. Uh, turn this thing on, make sure that it boots, and then install Windows and drivers. I just like installing everything outside the box first. It's just simpler, then you can slap everything inside the box, I mean the case, and then it'll all work when you have everything in there. Okay, now we have to plug in the power supply to obviously turn this on. So grab the AC cable, it comes inside the power supply box, and line up the cable with the back of the power supply and plug the other end into the wall. It should look different depending on which country you're in. This is what it looks like in the US. All right, I'm gonna plug in an HDMI cable because I'm using a portable monitor and it only has HDMI connection. So plug it into the back of the graphics card just to turn this on and uh, make sure to line it up correctly, not like what I'm doing. And plug the other end into your monitor. All right, now that we have the power supply fan up, uh, it's gonna intake fresh air so it isn't like choking itself off. We're just have, we just have to test this out inside the case first. And also with the power supply, there should be a switch at the back. Switch it to the line. Uh, it just indicates that it's on, that it can draw power from the wall. And as you can see from the motherboard, there is an LED there, so hopefully that's a good sign. HDMI connected, all the power uh, con connectors connected. Um, also got some USB keyboard and mouse uh, connected just because I want to go into BIOS and also have a portable monitor on this side. Can't really see it. So you have the front panel connectors uh, or the front panel header over here. This is basically where you plug in your power button to. Uh, so if you don't have a power button and you want to test it outside the case, you can actually get a screwdriver or anything metal and just short the uh, headers over here. So guys, get ready. We're gonna, I'm live on TikTok by the way. Follow me at tiktok.com slash at Tony Tech Bytes. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna turn this thing on. Let's see this boot. It's the very first boot. Uh, I haven't turned it on. Oh, and by the way, when I power this thing on, it might uh, restart a couple times. That's normal. And so, just have to short these pins over here. Which pins were it? I, I keep forgetting. 
It has, to be, it has to be one of these pins. Okay, there. Okay, it turned on. That is good news. It's probably gonna restart a couple times. Uh, so, yeah, let's yeah, let's wait and of course let's move the camera to the monitor so we can see what's going on. Okay, so it basically restarted a couple times. Yes, we see an ASUS ROG logo right here. Okay, if you look at the specs, uh, you can read it over here on this portable monitor. Ryzen 7 3700X, 8 cores, uh, 3600 megahertz RAM, 16 gigs of it. Uh, but it says 2130, oh no, never mind. 3600 megahertz is the base speed for the CPU. 2133 megahertz, we'll just set the XMP profile later. Uh, let's see, an M.2 SSD, that is great because we have an M.2 SSD. New CPU installed, press F1 to run setup. So let's just run setup. So over here, we want to go to AI Tweaker. Uh, I would suggest going to AI Overclock Tuner and uh, enabling DLCP, which is the XMP profile. It'll run the RAM at its advertised speeds. And uh, I also like to enable Precision Boost Overdrive as well. Make this enabled instead of auto. Go back and then uh, same changes, restart, but we have to plug in the Windows USB drive to install Windows onto our SSD. Okay, I clicked save changes and reset, and I also plugged in the USB drive with a copy of Windows so we can install Windows onto the SSD. All right, now that we are in this screen, it successfully recognized the USB drive, so we can install Windows from the USB drive onto the SSD. By the way, if you don't know how to install Windows onto a USB drive, check out Joey Delgado's video on YouTube. He made a really good one. So English, English, US, because we're in the US and I speak English. Click install now. And this might take a little bit. Uh, so just be patient. Get something to do while you're waiting for this. Okay, activate Windows. I actually do have a Windows key with me. And it's in this container, this OEM license container. You don't have to get a Windows 10 key, you can just... Okay, I got a Windows key over here, and I'm gonna cover it. I'm just gonna, inst I'm just gonna type it in, then click Next. If you don't have a product key, you can click I don't have a product key. Joey Delgado on YouTube has a great tutorial on installing Windows and all that stuff, if you wanna go more in depth. Okay, it should say a screen, just accept the license terms. Click Next. Uh, install, wait, no. Install Windows only. And uh, we only have one drive installed. So this is why I didn't plug in the hard drive yet. I wanted to kind of force it to install into the SSD. So uh, click on this one, next. And uh, that's where we want to install Windows. And so we just have to wait for it to install Windows. And it could take a couple minutes. I don't remember how long it takes. I think at most like an hour, but based on the progress, I hope not that long, but we'll just have to wait. All right, now that it is installing Windows, so it's just a moment. Uh, okay, so yes, we are in the US. Keyboard layout, yes, US. Wanna add a second keyboard? Keyboard, no. Connect you to network. Later. Uh, let's just do limited setup for now. And I'll let the customer connect their uh, account. I think we can just click next. No, can we not just click next? I don't want an account. Oh, okay, good. Okay, I just clicked next. Okay, that works. Uh, let's see, do more. No, I don't want this. No. They can just change it later if they, no, no location, no diagnostic. No, I don't like advertising. Uh, fine, and I don't want speech. Okay, click accept. Okay, now it's gonna obviously load into Windows. Hi, we're getting everything ready for you. Thank you so much, Bill Gates, I appreciate it. By the way, let's install the Wi-Fi antenna now, and sorry if the CPU fan sounds a little bit loud. I might have to go into BIOS later and set the fan curve. So you just take out uh, this Wi-Fi antenna, styrofoam, and you just have to sort of twist these ends into the uh, end for the motherboard, and you can connect to Wi-Fi. All right, we have this shark fin Wi-Fi antenna. Uh, you just have to, of course, twist these ends into the ends on the motherboard. You should do it when it's turned off, uh, just to so you don't accidentally electrocute yourself. The chances of that are probably really slim anyways though, just whatever. Okay, so I went back into BIOS and I went to fan control F6 in the BIOS. Uh, so let's change this to PWM and set a fan curve. We can just make it standard, uh, so it's a little bit quieter now. Chassis fan, uh, let's just check these, make sure that they're all fine. 
and okay AIO pump I guess we'll just leave it and exit save changes and reset uh, click OK Okay, I used the laptop to download the Wi-Fi driver as well as the LAN driver because Wi-Fi wasn't working. Uh, so I just downloaded the drivers from ASUS's website onto a USB drive and then uh, I just extracted them. Uh, so if you don't know how to extract, you just click extract all and then it will extract it. Uh, no, I don't want to do this. Into a file. So here's the USB drive. Let's install the LAN driver. So all you have to do is go to ASUS setup, uh, click yes, and then it's going to download onto the motherboard okay now that we are on google chrome search up the motherboard in this case it's asus b550f wi-fi uh, drivers then uh, go to the website motherboard manufacturer website it should be under support uh, for your motherboard it might look a little bit different obviously windows 10 64 bit and just download audio okay audio uh, i already installed the lan we don't need uh, utilities for winwar i already did wireless we need the chipset drivers uh, we need the SATA drivers, Bluetooth, and uh, do we need Armory Crate? Sure, whatever. Okay, let's just download this. And so we just have to wait for them all to download. We also want to download drivers from NVIDIA so we can make sure the graphics card works and everything. Uh, GeForce, this one's the 20 series, uh, 2070 Super, Game Ready Driver. And let's go just download this and it's going to download. Then we have to extract all like the other drivers and make sure to run the program. Okay, now we are installing the NVIDIA drivers. I just uh, double click to run the program, so let's just wait for it to install. Okay, we just want the NVIDIA driver. You can download GeForce Experience if you want to. So let's just do express download and it is downloading. Okay, the NVIDIA driver has installed. Let's click close and uh, extract all the other drivers as well. Uh, no, do it individually. Run this application. Do the same for all the other drivers. Extract all. Open up the application. ASUS setup in this case. Run it and uh, it'll download. And by the way, after downloading some of the drivers, they might tell you to restart. Uh, I would suggest just restarting, but once you're done with all the drivers, you would uh, restart anyways just to make sure that all the drivers are successfully downloaded. I also suggest making a new folder called drivers and just uh, dragging all your drivers into this folder just so you can keep everything organized. Let me just do that right now. Uh, where was it? Local disk. Drivers. There we go. Also, remember to download your chipset drivers. This is uh, the AMD chipset drivers. Now we're installing the Realtek audio driver. Click next. Uh, uninstall current driver. Click next to whatever. Install after reboot. It'll automatically install the driver. Okay. Now it's installing. And yes, I want to restart now. Okay. It's going to restart. Okay, let's also go into settings, update and security, check for updates, and there are probably going to be a ton of updates, so we'll just update them, restart the computer if needed, and uh, yeah, just make sure to update Windows. Yup, as I, as I suspected, there are a ton. I am back on ASUS's website, let's go to BIOS and firmware. Uh, since this is such a new motherboard, I kind of want to update the BIOS, and also I want to make it as new as possible for the customer and obviously um, updating the BIOS will help with stability since this is a new chipset so let's update I mean let's download the newest one and uh, you want to also make sure you have a USB drive so you want to download this file extract all and then copy it into the USB drive and I'll show you how to update the BIOS later once the Windows updates are done okay it turns out I downloaded the wrong BIOS this was the B550F BIOS but this is the Wi-Fi one uh, that we need to download so it should be this file okay let's download this and hurry up okay drag this into the USB drive then we can delete it go to the USB drive extract all extract okay here's the cap file now we can restart and go back into BIOS Okay, we're back to Easy Flash Utility. 
Go to this, uh, find the cap file, should be this one. And uh, here we go, yes, we wanna update the BIOS. And don't touch anything, just uh, make sure that it's updating. Also, I highly suggest not doing this while uh, you are in a thunderstorm um, or, or while you're, uh, I mean, just under any weird circumstances because you don't want the power to shut down and if it does shut down, you're gonna break the BIOS. So uh, we can just wait for it. And once it's done downloading and updating the BIOS, it might restart a couple times, just don't touch anything and it should be back to normal. Okay, it went back to here and we have a 3700X, 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, let's just press, press F1 to go back into setup. Okay, we don't need general help. I need to go back to AI Overclock Tuner, DOCP profile, uh, let's see, I also want to enable Precision Boost Overdrive because we're using an AIO, so you might as well get the best performance, save changes and reset, and we're going to go back into Windows. Okay, what we have to do now is install everything in the case since I pretty much installed all the software, drivers and stuff. So just unplug all the cables, make sure to unclip each cable first before pulling them out, and uh, they should go up pretty easily. For the graphics card, make sure to unclip this PCI clip. Uh, down here and it should be really easy to just take out. Let's also remove some of the plastic uh, just in case the customer doesn't do it themselves. And I'll leave the plastic on for the uh, cracking cooler because I want them to take it out. Since we're installing it inside the case, we can leave the uh, SSD as well as RAM and CPU on. We just have to disconnect the CPU cooler so just unscrew these thumb nuts opposite corners. Should be fairly easy to take out. Okay, I got that out. And also keep in mind for Ryzen CPUs, you want to twist uh, to break the seal with the thermal paste before actually lifting. So make sure to twist to break up the seal between the thermal paste and then lift off. And there we go. So we just have to wipe this off with isopropyl alcohol. I'll show you how to do it right now. Get some isopropyl alcohol and preferably a microfiber cloth, but I use a paper towel because doesn't really matter. Get the cooler, the cold plate. Uh, let me focus really quickly first. Okay. And just wipe it off. It should come off fairly easily. And look at how easy that was with 91% isopropyl alcohol. There we go. It works like a charm. Then just get another piece of paper towel or clean off the microfiber cloth and wipe off the CPU's integrated heat spreader. Finally got the N60H710i case. Okay, we have the 8710i case. Let's quickly open up the back panel. Just uh, pops out like that. And I'm gonna put the rear, or actually not the back panel, it's the side panel. And uh, let's take out all the cables, the front panel cables from under here, as well as the box of screws that NZXC includes. And by the way, if you're ever confused about which screws to use, uh, the manual includes everything here uh, about the case, so Shows everything about which screws to use, how to build it, and if you ever get confused, if I don't go too in depth, definitely follow this manual that comes with the box. Now let's get the power supply installed. Uh, just unscrew these screws in the back that hold down this power supply bracket. And uh, we just have to screw this bracket onto the other side of the power supply. There is a dust filter down here, so we want the fan facing down, and facing down means that it intakes fresh air from the bottom and exhausts out the back so it doesn't interfere with the other components over here. So we basically just have to get the screws that are come that uh, come with the bag inside the case and then just line up the power supply like this and just screw it in. And we've already connected all the cables uh, before, so we don't really need to do this anymore. So let's get the correct screws. It should be the hexagonal screws. Uh, whatever NZXT calls it, like the 632 hexagonal or something. So that's for like front panel audio. Uh, yeah, these screws. The 632 screw hexagon. So it's only four screws. Just take these out really quick. And let's speed run this. Just line up the bracket and... Uh, Screw it in. How hard can this be? Screw down this side of the power supply. So I've already done the upper right corner, bottom left. Let's do the top left and then the bottom right. 
As a refresher, here are all the cables that we've already plugged in. The 24 pin, the CPU power cable, uh, the GPU power cable, should say VGA or PCIe or something. And then the peripheral SATA cable, this is the power, your hard drive, as well as the uh, pump for the cooler. Okay, fan facing down. Uh, let's move all the cables inside this basement down here. Just through here. Uh, wrap them inside, stuff them in somewhere for now. And then we're just going to push this in. And I believe the power supply should fit in like this. And there we go. And then you just have to use the thumb screws and screw them back in. You shouldn't really use your uh, screwdriver because you might make it too tight. Just use your thumbs, it should be more than fine. Okay, and then screw in these corners. And remember when you turn on the PC to flick the power supply switch to on, which is the line, but we'll do that later. Let's also remove the side glass panel as well, uh, just so if we flip it around we don't damage anything. Put it somewhere safe, put it somewhere where it won't crack, because uh, this is tempered glass, it could potentially get damaged. Uh, okay, there, just pops out like that and I'll put it somewhere safe, like on styrofoam. Okay, now we need to flip the case onto the side. And uh, at the bottom here is a hard drive cage. We have to get our screwdriver and remove these four screws down here for the hard drive cage so we can mount the hard drive. The hard drive cage should look something like this. Then you have to get your hard drive, put it into uh, either the top or bottom sled and screw it down uh, over here with either four or six screws. It's kind of up to you. Follow the manual for which screws to use if you are confused any time during this video. Remove the hard drive from the anti-static bag. Uh, I guess we'll just have to open it like this. Try not to touch the gold contacts on the bottom. And uh, yeah, here's the hard drive. So we just have to find the cage, line it up like this. And you also want to make sure that uh, the hard drive is uh, facing like this so it has the contacts on this side because if you want to if you put it the opposite way like this then obviously you can't you can't plug in anything so then you can't even use your hard drive so make sure it's like this and it goes into the cage like this and you screw it from the bottom as well as from the sides to make sure that it doesn't flop around everywhere because if this hard drive does move around everywhere it could potentially get corrupted I believe the manual says to use these 632 screw flats so uh, let's go ahead and use this for the hard drive. Okay, so let's take out uh, four, because we don't really need that many screws. We just have to hold it down on both sides. One, two, three, four screws. Okay, and then make sure you keep all your screws tidy and together. So just line up the hard drive with the cage like this and screw in the holes. So you can do one in this end, one in this end, and then uh, one on this side, one on this side. So I'll just go ahead and do that right now. Okay, you can see with this hard drive, I screwed it in over here, over here, and over here and here. So here's the back side of the cage. This part goes into deep into the case, and uh, over here is accessible. You can see the SATA and power connection. So we just put this back into the case like here, and screw it from the bottom with the screws that already came with it. This part is going to be kind of annoying. Get back the four screws and uh, hold up the hard drive cage. Also line it up with the screws the uh, screw indentations that were there before. So there we go, we got two screws in so far. Quickly go onto the next screw. There we go, the hard drive and the cage is installed. Okay, now we get to the interesting part. To install the motherboard, you have to use these 632 flat screws that we used prior to this. So when you're picking up the motherboard, try to lift it up by the RAM sticks, the size of the motherboard, or the VRM heat sinks. Don't try to, I try not to touch like uh, any of the contracts, contacts, or uh, any of the traces on the motherboard. So kind of gently have to line up the motherboard. It's kind of awkward sometimes, like you don't know where to grip. But uh, also the IO shield is pre-installed for this motherboard. Let me remove this USB uh, keyboard for now. Um, but yeah. The IO shield is already pre-installed, so we don't have to install one. If you do, if you did have to install an IO shield, uh, just line it up with the back of the case, and uh, so yeah, just put it down, 
and make sure to line it up with the standoffs that are already pre-installed on the case. So just make sure that the motherboard lines up with the IO shield in the back. And this case is really spacious. You should also probably hear a click because uh, there is a sort of standoff thing in the middle over here that lines up with this uh, screw hole on the motherboard. Uh, so it should kind of plop right in. And if you have trouble lining it up, just try taking it out and slowly put it back in again. There should be eight screws with this motherboard since it's an ATX motherboard in an ATX case. Uh, NZXT already pre-installed these standoffs, thank goodness, so we didn't have to worry about like uh, hand screwing in standoffs, then putting on the motherboard on top of the standoffs. Uh, and you also want to have standoffs because if the motherboard touches the back metal of the case, then it could potentially short out. So we got one screw hole up here next to the CPU power, one over here next to all the fan headers, and um, one on the very top right, one on the right sort of middle-ish side, one on the bottom right down here, another one on the bottom sort of middle-ish down here, uh, one on the bottom left, and another one down here on sort of the left middle side. And this center-ish kind of one is already filled in by this standoff. So just get all these screws and screw them down. Make sure not to over tighten it because you can potentially strip a screw and your motherboard could be stuck in there forever. Okay, like I said, this is where the magnetic screwdrivers come in handy. So you can see I have a screw. So just sort of line it up. Make sure you have good lighting as well. Line it up, screw it down. It's pretty much that simple. Screw it down till it starts to feel a little bit tighter. Then uh, just make sure to screw down with confidence like what The Verge would tell me. So let's screw in these screws. Just make sure that they screw into the standoffs and make sure that they're not too tight. Then I'll just finish off the rest of them and show you in the next part of this video what they all look like. All right, so if you take a look at the motherboard, you can see that there is a screw right here. This is to screw on the, on the motherboard to the case. Um, and you can see there are more screws like over to here and uh, you'll basically just find eight of them and you can easily identify them because there's usually like metal protecting and like a clearly labeled circle. This is where you screw down the motherboard onto the case. Okay, this is where the fun begins. Make sure to find your 24 pin cable that is already plugged into the motherboard and uh, don't worry about cable management yet. Just try to route it behind this uh, cable management bar into here and uh, make sure to line up the notches like we already did before like this it might be a little bit tight uh, it looks a lot cleaner like this versus wrapping it around the cable management bar just kind of have to line it up and push it down might be a little bit difficult like this so I'm gonna flip it over okay the motherboard 24 pin is secure I can see that there are no gaps so looks secure and I lined it up correctly. Get the 24, I mean, get the uh, eight pin CPU power cable and uh, route it on top here and just try to plug it into the eight pin header. You can plug in the four pin one too. Just make sure to push it in all the way and the notches uh, sort of clip in and you can pull the CPU cable back a little bit uh, just to conceal it a little better. So yeah, it's pretty clean, just tucked in away over there as, as well as this cable. Uh, rather than like routing it over this bar, it just looks kind of ugly unless you have custom cable extensions. So the next part, we have to get the front panel connectors and we're gonna have to plug it in down here. So you remember this bundle of cables in the back? It's in this like plastic bag. You're gonna have to unravel it and open it up to find a whole bunch of cables. Okay, this first cable should say F panel. It's for the front panel, just for the power button. Uh, you also have this cable. It looks kind of rainbowish. It says HD Auto. That HD Audio. That is for the front panel audio. Uh, for up here on top of the case, if you want to use your headphones top of the case versus the back of the motherboard. You also got this USB. I think this is for the uh, lighting controller, the smart device that NZXT has, as well as this blue tipped cable. It's a really thick one. This is for the front panel USB Type A. So if you want to plug in some USB devices in the front, you're going to have to plug that in. And uh, I think we also have a USB-C cable. Yeah, this right here plugs into the USB-C header on your motherboard, an internal header. But unfortunately, this motherboard, I believe, does not have USB-C. Uh, so this header that is in the case, let me quickly focus, focus on it. Okay, it looks like this. There's like a cap on it. 
We do not need to use this because we don't have USB-C on the motherboard. And if you don't plug this in, it's fine. It just means that in the front or the top of the case, you will not be able to plug in that and it will just not work. Also, generally with all these bundle, this whole bundle of front panel cables, you want to try to route it underneath over here, underneath this motherboard tray so it looks a lot cleaner. You plug it in under here and route it there versus like just jumbling it all over here and going across the cable management bar. It looks ugly. All right, let's go for one of the first cables. Uh, this blue tipped USB type A 3.0, like type A cable. Uh, you kind of have to route it over here underneath this cable management bar. There's a notch on this. Keep in mind there is a notch as well as a notch over here. It should say USB 3.0. Uh, also check with your motherboard if you're not sure. Line up the notch and uh, you kind of have to like flip it around so it doesn't look as messy. Okay, like this and here we go. Just kind of have to flip it around and plug it in. And it shouldn't be too hard to plug in. Just make sure that you completely plug it in and try to tuck in the cable as much as you can. But uh, there we go. Okay, this USB 2.0 cable, it should say USB 2.0 clearly on it. Make sure to line it up with the missing pin, uh, otherwise it won't fit. And line it up with a USB 2.0 header. You should have at least one on your motherboard. So I'll just plug it in over there. And let's do front panel header now, or front panel connection. So just route it underneath here. It just looks a lot cleaner than routing it elsewhere. Uh, so yeah, this also has a missing pin over here on this whole block and it is really convenient with NZXT because they put all your front panel connections just in one single block. Make sure to line it up and I'm um, just checking the pins should be on this sort of block. Okay, and if it doesn't work then you might have installed it wrong. Uh, just if the power button doesn't work then you probably installed it wrong. Uh, unless the power button is broken and you need to send that into NZXT. So we got this sort of rainbowy cable, it says HD audio. It should go over here to where it says AAFP or just something like FP or front panel uh, audio or something along of that, something along the lines of that. Uh, just try to route it underneath over here. There's clearly holes over here just to route your cables, you want to use them. Okay, there's also this missing pin over here on this block for audio. Let me move the case a little bit more over here. Hopefully you can see it. There's a missing pin over here, so make sure to line it up correctly. And if it doesn't fit, then you're probably installing it wrong. Okay, uh, I think I'm installing it wrong. Let me see. Uh, no. Okay. No, I was right. Okay. Okay, and there we go. Just tuck in the cable down here. You don't want to see any of the cable. Try to tuck in as much of the cables as possible. Okay, we got all the front panel stuff plugged in. The NZXT Kraken Cooler also had this USB 2.0 cable, so uh, we'll just put this in the back of the case and route it underneath for the second USB 2.0 header here. And make sure to line it up with the missing pin over here. And if it doesn't fit, then try to flip it around or upside down. Okay, and there it fits perfectly. And just sort of tuck in the cable and keep it in the back. We're going to use it later. Okay, we want to get the SATA cable, this one that we already plugged in before. Uh, it's already plugged into the NZXT pump cable that requires a SATA power. Uh, so we'll plug in one end of this SATA power into the hard drive. Make sure to line up the notch again. It should fit in perfectly. If it does not fit in, then you probably are installing it incorrectly. So just make sure to line it up with the large half of the hard drive. This is to power it to make sure that it actually can turn on. So I think I'm doing it wrong. Just flip it around like this. And it should line up with the notch and it should just plug in like that. And you can just tuck in this excess cable later. Now you need to get these SATA data cables. It should come with your motherboard and we grabbed this earlier before we closed up the motherboard box. Uh, so take out all these SATA cables. So we can just use a right angle one uh, since it is sort of at a right angle and there's like a clip over here. Make sure to line it up with the other sort of portion or a third of the hard drive. Line it up and it should just click in, you should hear it click too, and then route it behind this cable management bar into the other side of the case. And then we can just plug it into the case right now. So let's flip around the case. To this side, you can see the SATA data cable. This part's 
plugs into the motherboard uh, so that you can actually use the hard drive so you can access it. If we zoom in on the SATA ports, you can see this has a clip. Uh, so yeah, you to take it out, you just unclip it and then just reinsert it like this. And then uh, it should just fit in like that. Okay, now we need to install the radiator at the top of the case so we need to pop this side panel off. It might require a little bit of force and it might sound kind of harsh, uh, but yeah, we need to take this out and you can see this dust filter at the front. Pop the top panel. And Okay, it's kind of difficult to pop off, but there you go. At the top, you can see four thumb screws, one here, one here, one here, one here. Just unscrew them so we could take off this radiator bracket. Uh, they might be a little bit tight, so you might have to use a screwdriver. Unscrew this, and then unscrew the last screw. Now we take off the radiator bracket, try to clear your desk a little bit, and we're going to install the radiator onto this bracket. You should have eight small screws, and just screw the radiator onto the bracket. Uh, make sure to line it up with the holes. Uh, let's do this one over here. Okay, now we have to unscrew the fans and flip them around so that the cable, uh, so the cables over here are on this side instead. So just have to unscrew these screws, long screws. Just flip the fans around like that. Okay, now that I have flipped the fans around, uh, let's get these fan cables and route it under here. Uh, there's a cutout here for a reason. So just drop in the liquid cooler and radiator. Now that the radiator is in, we just have to screw back in the thumb screws. Let's apply a pea-sized amount of thermal paste in the middle of the CPU. We're going to use the Arctic MX4, just put a pea-sized amount in the middle, and that looks great. Okay, now we just have to lower this down like we did before, and then use these thumb nuts to screw it down with the opposite corners. Uh, so let's just line up the holes, and once you touch the thermal paste, make sure not to lift it back up. Uh, I actually did lift it up a little bit, but it didn't touch the thermal paste, so that was fine. And uh, just hold it down, use the thumb screws to... Screw it down, screw down the cooler. Make sure they're tight. You don't really need a screwdriver to ensure that they're tight and then you can adjust the tubing all you want. Okay, now we need to unscrew the uh, second and third PCIe slot covers. There should be thumb screws inside the case. Uh, and then you just unscrew one. Take off this PCIe slot cover and keep it because you might need it in the future if you ever sell the case or give it to a friend. Okay, and here are the slot covers. And if you look on the inside of the case over here, you can see thumb screws over here. So also make sure to unclip this PCIe slot. We're using the top one because it's an X16 speed. I don't know about uh, this one. This could be X8, but it doesn't matter. We're going to use this top slot to put in the graphics card. Okay, now that we have this unclipped, just line it up with the slot. So just make sure that this lines up and you should also hear a click. Just have to move it in a little bit more and then uh, almost there. Okay. Okay, there we heard a clip and you can see the PCIe clip is back up. So uh, we can use the thumb screws and screw this back on. Just screw down the graphics card, make sure that it doesn't move around during transit. Uh, even if you're not moving this around, you do need to screw this down just so it doesn't sag as much either. Can I double check, make sure they're tight. Okay, here we go. And you can see the GPU isn't sagging. Uh, and then we have to plug in the GPU PCIe power connectors to power it. Okay, you see the PCIe slots again are the PCIe connectors. Uh, we need to plug this in the graphics card. Uh, so we want to route it under this hole over here. Under here. And yeah, okay. So let's plug this end in. Should just clip in like that and then 
the six pin part, we can leave the two pin part out and it should plug in. Just make sure it's tight and there we go. And then uh, you can pull down the excess cable. So uh, we just want to show as little cable as possible. There we go. Okay, cable management time and we also need to plug in some of the fan headers as well. Uh, so CPU power cable it should route somewhat like this. Motherboard 24 pin should route something like this through this uh, raceway here. And then uh, the GPU power cables and everything else we can kind of stuff down here if you want to. Uh, so let's route the CPU power cable. You also might want to use some twist ties as well. Let me grab one. But actually I think we might use the fan headers on the motherboard because uh, you need a CPU fan header. You know, or you need something on the CPU fan header or else the motherboard is not going to boot. Uh, so we can also route the 24 pin motherboard uh, power cable like so, this, and uh, use the Velcro ties. So like we already did before, plug in the USB cable and it should go right here. Okay, and then plug in this pump header. Uh, it's kind of stuck here. And uh, the AIO pump cable can go right here. You can kind of route it under. It's not long enough. Dang it. I'll have to. Well, actually, I can route it like this. Around here. Okay, yeah, this looks good. AIO pump. Just plug it in like this. And then uh, you can kind of conceal it under there. And try to route these cables under if you can. As well as around the VRM heat sinks like this. Because you don't want to, you don't want to have them like covering the VRM heat sinks. Just looks kind of ugly, so you can route them around. And the two Kraken fans, uh, we can plug them into the CPU and CPU optional fan headers that are kind of being blocked by the radiator. They're just sort of under there. You might have to uh, reach in there, and then we can tuck in the cables a little bit later. Okay, I lifted up the radiator. We can plug in this CPU fan cable right here. And then plug in the other one uh, right next to it to the CPU optional fan header. Right here. And then uh, we can just tuck in these this excess cabling into the back of the case like this. So we don't have to see it. And then just lower the radiator down again. And uh, we can screw it back in with the thumb screws. Okay, now we can tuck in the fan cables over here and get a zip tie or a twist tie or something. Uh, so let me just tuck this in, then tuck this one in like this. Right it under here. Get twist ties to tie up these cables and then hide it like there. Get some more twist ties. Uh, let's tie these together up here. Then just conceal it like that. Okay, then we have to worry about the mess down here. The N60 Smart Hub also needs a SATA power. Uh, so, uh, got that plugged in, that plugged in. Okay, for cable management, this doesn't look that bad. Time to close up the side panels. All right, first boot, let's turn on the PC. Uh, it's inside the case and I already downloaded drivers and everything, but first boot while it's inside the case, let's go. What? Okay, I think I just set the front panel headers on incorrectly, so, okay, there, yeah. So, okay, it's turning on. Uh, pretty sure it was just incorrect front panel headers. Let's also go to 
uh, format, create and format hard disk partitions, and initialize the hard drive. New simple volume, next, next. Sure, we'll just make it D. Finish. Okay, there. And so we've initialized the hard drive, so now we have the SSD for Windows, and the hard drive is ready uh, to be used. So you can see right now, the PC recognizes the hard drive and the SSD. Some preboot manufacturers actually forget to do this, which is kind of common because they don't actually uh, care about their builds. So yeah. All right. So thank you so much for watching this video, building this PC for a customer. Uh, so I had a ton of fun building this. It spent I spent a couple hours because I had to film everything and I wanted to troubleshoot everything uh, outside the case before putting it inside. Uh, because if you if you do encounter any problems and you already installed everything in the case, it's going to be a pain just trying to remove everything after you've already cable managed, you already screwed everything. So it is just a safer bet to test it out before you put it inside the case. It does take a lot more time though. So as a reminder, if you'd like to pick up any of the parts below, I'll link them in the description. Uh, they are going to be affiliate links, so I, do earn, so I do earn a tiny bit of commission from them, but it does not come at an additional cost to you. And also, if you do want to purchase a custom pre-built PC or a preset one, uh, then just check out specify.tech. I'll leave a website link in the description down below for your convenience. And uh, I'll try to take as many orders as I humanly can, and I'll just be really busy throughout the next couple of weeks or months or whatever. So thank you all so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video as well. I hope to create more build videos in the future as well as more in-depth tutorials. So if you enjoyed this one, please uh, let me know in the comments what you thought about it as well. And I'll definitely try to improve as time goes on and I build more PCs.